There's a power that lives within every human that walks this earth. It's, it's a language of human emotion. And the power of human emotion that we typically discount uh, in our culture, not so in other cultures, but in our culture, the power of that emotion to literally change the conditions that, that we're talking about, the, the conditions of the, the healing within our bodies. And, and what the experiments are showing is that this power of emotion has the ability to influence not only our bodies biologically, but beyond our bodies into the physical world on the quantum level. Uh, it is a, a, a powerful language that other cultures apparently know very well. And in the West, when science came in, science discounted uh, the effects of things that cannot be seen and measured directly 400 years ago. And now they're coming back full circle with the, the language of quantum science, uh, reincorporating these these forces, but the feeling and the emotion and the power of human emotion is among those forces that cannot be seen. The laboratory experiments are documenting the fact, and it is a fact now, that human emotion changes the DNA inside of our bodies and the way we function in this world and that those effects extend beyond our bodies into the physical matter uh, of the people in the world around us when we learn that language. And it, it leads us to the understanding that science is simply a language that describes our relationship to ourselves, to one another, to our world, to the universe beyond it. It's a language that describes, uh, in very technical terms, how things work, the mechanics, the nuts and bolts, and how we function within that mechanism that we call life in the universe. The best scientists will freely admit that our science is incomplete. There are a lot of things science simply cannot explain right now. But what if we take the best of the science that we do know and marry that with the languages that have always been here, the languages of spirituality uh, and those, those indigenous understandings that tell us we're part of this world and we're part of one another, we're part of a greater creation. Uh, we're not separate from these things. What if we marry those two ways of knowing into a greater wisdom, where will that lead us? The line between science and spirituality is getting very fuzzy, yeah. and especially in, in the language of, uh, of quantum physics. And if we can flesh out those missing pieces and it helps us to become better people and create a better world, why wouldn't we want to do that? We already know what it's like to have a world where we all feel separate and we feel like there's not enough to go around. It's a world based in competition. We know where that world has led so far. Let's try something different. What would happen if we embrace one another in a spirit of cooperation like all of the rest of the natural world does, humankind? Uh, this is the only species that believes that violent competition is the optimum way to get ahead. Uh, and it's based on a false interpretation of, of Darwin's work uh, over, you know, back in the mid-1800s. But all, all their species in nature, uh, without fail, show that cooperation among the species will always produce uh, the strongest uh, of the species, uh, uh, the, the greatest number of offspring, the greatest ability to meet the challenges of, of whatever, it, whatever it is. In the bottom line, it, it says that you and I and our listeners we have a, a latent power, it's, it's dormant, it's sleeping within us. Uh, the ability to create a feeling and the quality of an emotion inside of our bodies that literally heals uh, the stuff our bodies are made of. In the human body, 50 trillion cells in every cell is a capacitor, it's a resistor, it's a transistor. It, it stores energy, it releases energy. Every cell in our body is about 1.17 volts of electrical potential. So you, you stop and think that 50 trillion cells, and do the math, 50 trillion times 1.17 volts, and uh, all of a sudden you realize that we have the potential of, of being very, very powerful beings. And the question is, how do we focus that? The Western scientists now acknowledge the fact, and it is a fact, that we are bathed in a field of intelligent energy. It's everywhere all the time. It's not out there. It's, it's inside of me. It's inside of you. We connect with it. The language of human emotion and thought and feeling and belief, those kinds of words describe the language that allows us to communicate with this field. And when we can access this field, this is where the miraculous healings in the human body come from. It tremendously enhances immune systems. And, and although scientists are, are still hard pressed to, to measure this field like it's, it's a non-conventional energy. So we don't have the kind of equipment that uh, you would expect to, to typically measure a field like this, but we know how it works and we know the effects are there. Other cultures have known it for 5,000 years, so it's, it's marrying the best science of our time with that ancient wisdom. Not only are we not told that we're powerful, we have been led and, and conditioned in our culture and in our families and our society to believe 
that uh, we are are not powerful, and that that power lies somewhere else, that it lies with uh, a church, or it lies with uh, uh, an organization, or it lies with a doctor, or it lies with a scientist, or someone who has knowledge and power that we do not have. And so when we find ourselves faced with situations in our lives uh, that, that push us to the, the very edge of who we believe we are, we believe that we have to go to someone else. So it's, it's about personal re responsibility personal power and recognizing that we are part of rather than separate from our world. And it's not about controlling or manipulating or imposing our will. It's about us participating and cooperating as a living organism that we call humankind to shape the destiny of our future. And that's why uh, I, I'm so excited because every person is, is a key element. The key, Robin, is unresolved frustration, unresolved anger. That's where we get in trouble with our bodies. We all feel those are. Um, we all feel them because they're uh, they're signals telling us about our environment, what's happening in the world. We we want to feel those. The key is when we do feel them to recognize what they're saying and what to do about them, what they mean to us personally, and and to resolve and reconcile whatever it is that is being brought to our attention in that moment. And the language of our heart speaks to the stuff our world is made of, to our bodies and to the physical reality of this world. Uh, the world will mirror back what it is that we're feeling in our hearts. When we're feeling anger, hate, jealousy, rage, you're going to see it in your relationships, you're going to see it in your health, you're going to see it in your body. Intuitively, we know that. Uh, and, and, and the flip side works as well. The key is to hone that feeling of peace or of healing, to feel the things as if they've already happened, to feel the peace in our world as if it's already happened, or the healing in our loved ones as if that healing has already happened. And in that way, we are giving this field something to work with so it can, it can mirror that back in, in the quantum world. Yep. And there are all kinds of self-help. Everyone learns differently. So what works for my anger and, and your anger or someone else's may, may not be the same thing. But the key uh, is to honor uh, the language of, of human emotion in our hearts. Forgiveness is, is vital. It's necessary for us to move forward in our, in our lives. We'll all have experiences uh, where we feel betrayed or hurt. Uh, where we feel that something has been taken from us by those who had power over us, either physically, emotionally, uh, materially, something like that. We all have those experiences. The key to transcending those is to, is to get past them, and you can't get past them by sweeping them under the carpet. Mm -hmm. uh, compassion is the word that the, the Buddhist traditions, we go in those monasteries in Tibet, they, they look at what's happened to their lives and what they've lost, and it's... it's you're hard-pressed to find an angry Buddhist in the monasteries in Tibet. And in the, the pre-Judeo-Christian traditions, there was a sect called the Essenes, E-S-S-E-N-E-S. -E -E uh, they wrote entire texts about how we get through those times in our lives, and they said what we do is we bless the things that hurt us. When we bless the things that hurt us, we're actually acknowledging, bringing that forward, just saying, yes, it happened, and, and then that allows them to work through that energy and, and to transcend the energy. When you bless something long enough, uh, it's, it's just something that uh, everyone has to experience uh, on their own. It actually changes chemically what happens in our bodies. And when we understand that the world around us, and this is the language of quantum physics, when the world around us, we understand it's nothing more and nothing less than a mirror of what we have become from within. Our anger, our hate, our rage, our jealousy, as individuals is mirrored, mirrored around us and collectively. Our love, our compassion, our forgiveness, our understanding. So I think this is the generation that gets, that gets to, to learn that new way of being and embrace. And I acknowledge as a scientist, this is a very different way of thinking about the world. It's very different than what I was taught and trained and conditioned on the one hand. On the other hand, it's what the science is showing and the evidence. The, we can talk about the experiments and the evidence is out there uh, showing that, that the emotions that we hold in here become the physical reality in the world around. They literally turn the atoms off and on of the stuff that our world and our bodies are made of. And that is a, is a huge statement to make, and it's a very, very empowering way to look at the world. When we choose peace and healing and love and compassion and forgiveness and understanding and tolerance in our hearts, we know that that changes the chemistry in our bodies and we're healthier. That's a fact. We also know that those changes extend to the world around us, into our communities and families, in ways that can be measured, and that's a fact. And with those two facts, I think that we can, we can move on in this 21st century and not let 
the, the frightening conditions of the world disempower us. We can look at that world square in the eye and say, yes, these things have happened. There's a power within us, and maybe we'll outgrow the need for war.